today I am making a bourbon pecan pie. It's Thanksgiving time and that's always a great um, pie to bring to a Thanksgiving gathering. So I already have all of my stuff out and my pie crust calls for a half a cup of pecans in the crust itself ground up finely. I have my handy dandy um, coffee grinder that I only use for spices and nuts and I'm just going to grind this up a little bit at a time until I have it all ground up into a flour consistency. Okay, I'm going to switch um, what I'm grinding this up in. I'm not really liking how it's turning out. The pecans are kind of getting mushy and as you can see there's still some pretty good sized chunks and I, I didn't start with any whole pecans so I'm going to use my food processor. Okay, one of the reasons why I keep a unused paintbrush is to really thoroughly clean my coffee grinder after I've ground something and make sure I get all of the previous food that I can out. Okay, that was a much smoother operation. I got my flour much quicker, much less mess. It's still a little sticky, but that's going to be fine because it's going into a dough and the dough needs to be sticky. The recipe calls for um, two-thirds of it to be flour, and I have my organic wheat flour, and then one-third of it, which ends up being a half a cup, to be my ground pecans. So I'm going to add in my ground pecan, And I'm, I'm pretty much just going to put it all in. That looks like a little bit more than half a cup, but that should be fine. Now I went through my uh, ground pecan after I ground it, and I just made sure that I didn't have any um, large chunks in it because that will interfere with the pie crust. It calls for... Some, a, a teaspoon of salt and as always I'm going to use my pink salt to have match, maximum nutritional value. It calls for a couple of tablespoons of sugar uh, whenever possible. I like to use my coconut sugar. Coconut sugar will work really well in this recipe so I'm just going to use my coconut sugar. Now it has you mix everything thoroughly before you add in your cold water and your butter. And I like to use a whisk. I, I found that a whisk works really well with your dry goods. It mixes everything without making a big mess. Okay, I have it mixed really well. So now if you notice, I've got it on my stand mixer bowl and I have an ice pack already on my stand mixer to keep my butter cold while I mix it. And I'm going to get my butter and my cold water out of the refrigerator and I'll be ready to start. Okay, I had my butter, I would cut it up into smaller chunks and I had it in the refrigerator so it would be nice and cold. And so first I put my butter into my flour and I make sure that I have my setting on the lowest possible, otherwise I'll just create a big poof of flour and then I'm going to mix it. Okay, maybe I can turn it up a little bit. Well, that's not going to say I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. There we go. Alright. No cups of flour and my butter is mixing in. I've turned up my mixer because my butter is mixed in enough that I'm not getting big poofs of flour. And it's almost time to add in some water. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to look really doughy. And this is just the butter. I haven't added the water yet. So I have my ice cold water. And it calls for eight or nine tablespoons. But it's been my experience with this pecan that... I start less, so I'm just going to put in seven tablespoons of the cold water and mix it and see where I am, and then I'll uh, see if I need to add more. You can see that we just with seven tablespoons of water, that's, that's plenty, that might even be a little bit too much. 
Okay, next I'm going to take the dough and I'm going to put it in a plastic wrap and then I'm going to refrigerate it for at least half an hour and just let it settle and get nice and cold for a half an hour in the refrigerator on, inside some plastic wrap. Okay, my dough has been refrigerated for half an hour and it tells you to just um, take it out of the plastic but I prefer leaving it in the plastic. It's easier to get it into my, my pie pan. So I've already floured up my, my um, rolling pin and I have um, some little guards on my rolling pin on each end that help me uh, keep the, the pie crust the, all the same depth uh, or thickness rather throughout the entire thing. I prefer wearing gloves because there's a lot of butter in this dough and uh, just the heat of my body temperature if I wasn't wearing gloves would, would thaw it just trying to work with it. So I'm just flattening out my dough and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to go one each direction. And I have to flour often, especially in the beginning here. Um, once I get enough dough stuck to my, or rather butter stuck to my rolling pin, I won't have to, I won't have to uh, flour it as much. So I'm just rolling it out. And then once I get it rolled out, I'll be ready to put it into my pie dish. Okay, this is the trickiest, hardest part for me is getting, now I have my pie crust rolled out and getting it carefully put into my dish without messing up my crust. And as you can see, I went a little bit out of my plastic that should be able to be fixed. So I, the reason why I left it on my plastic is so I can just lift my plastic up and flop it right into my pie dish. And I tried a lot of different methods and this method works the best for me. If you make very many pies, you'll figure out some method that will work for you as well, but I found this works really well. So now I just need to go around and even out my pie crust and, um, and get it all ready for my filling, which I haven't even started making yet. So it looks like I have enough dough left over to maybe make a another small individual pie. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put this dough in the refrigerator. If it looks like I have enough filling, I'll come back and I'll do a, a small individual pie. So one thing I like to do in the bottom of my pies is just put a little stamp that says made with love. It just bakes in. Nobody really knows it's there but me. But you know, they've done tests that show that just by um, putting the word love on a glass of water, it affects how the water acts within our body. So I just put a little made with love. It looks my, like my W wanted to do its own thing. Okay, there we go. And then my next step before I blind bake it is I'm going to go and I'm going to just put some uh, pecans along the bottom of the pie. And then I'm going to blind bake it for about seven minutes or so, just long enough to make sure it's not soggy when I, when I finish baking the whole thing. And while it's baking, I'll be making my filling. Okay, there we go, and it looks like I still have plenty of pecans for the top of my pie, too. This is going to be a very pecan-y pecan pie. 
Something that I just learned from my brother who loves to cook is that a browned butter will add that more buttery flavor to my pecan pie and I really prefer a pecan pie that's more on the butter side than the sweet side. So the first thing I'm going to do before I really start making the syrup is I'm going to brown my butter. Okay, it wasn't really starting to brown or anything. It was just starting to look like ghee, which I certainly don't want. So a cook called my brother, and I should have had it in a bigger skillet. And I really, I have it up pretty high on, on uh, I have it on six on my electric stove. And what it should do is come to a boil pretty quickly, and then the butter should actually begin to start to brown. So this is my first time ever doing browning of butter, and I'm filming it, so yay for me, my boldness. <laughs> okay, it looks like I have browned butter. I've never done this before, and I'm afraid of getting it very brown, but if you look, it, it looks like I have browned butter. So I'm going to take it off my heat. The recipe called for hard-packed brown sugar. And I make my own. I just start with my coconut sugar so I know it has lower glycemic index. And then I use the organic molasses. I know everything that's in this brown sugar. It's completely organic and um, it has a much lower glycemic index than a store-bought brown sugar would. Okay, I'm ready to make my syrup for my pecan pie. And I went ahead and added the eggs into my bowl. And I'm going to add my pink salt and my brown sugar, my homemade brown sugar. I'm adding three teaspoons of vanilla. Oops. Let's say that's. There we go. And I need to add three quarters cup of corn syrup, which is always a mess to measure, so I'm going to wait to do that to last. It calls for two tablespoons of Jack Daniels whiskey. Actually, it's three tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and add in all three tablespoons. I hope this little sampler bottle that I bought is enough whiskey for this recipe because I really didn't want to buy a big bottle of whiskey just for a little recipe. Perfect! And I have exactly enough. So now I'm going to measure out my Cairo syrup which is always a lot of fun. Okay, here we go. This uh, bottle of Corn syrup was adult proof getting it open. It was something else. All right, and add my corn syrup and then put in my paddle and mix it up. I'm going to scrape as much of this out as I can and get it into my container. That smell like whiskey, but the alcohol component of the whiskey will burn out. So the recipe says to add my butter, and I have my browned butter here, which really has uh, looks great and it smells really good too. And I'm going to add it in, and then as soon as I add it, I'm going to flip on the mixer and mix it as quickly as possible. The last thing I'm going to do is add 
synthicon pieces. Um, I like the the syrupy part not to be very uh, gelatin. I like a little bit of crunch in there. So I don't add a whole lot, but I add enough to keep it from um, tasting like the texture of flan. I really don't care for flan at all. Okay, I have my syrup ready to go. I have my pie crust pre-baked a little bit. I didn't bake it all the way. I just baked it a little bit. Just enough to make sure that it's not all gushy and soggy underneath my pie, which is kind of a rude taste to encounter. And now I've put all my syrup. They call it syrup in the recipe. And I've got all my syrup into my pie crust. And I certainly don't have enough extra here to make another pie with that little extra bit of dough, so that's not going to happen. And now I'm going to take some pieces and try to just gently float them on top of my pie. Like I said, this is going to be a very pecani pie. Oh, I know she can't really see what I'm doing here. There we go. And so I'm going to just go back and I'm going to put pecans on top here and then I'm ready to bake it. And now I'm ready to put it into the oven. Uh, if I had a way of holding the camera and holding the pie, I would show you me putting it into the oven. But I don't have a way to do that and, and this is a very heavy pie even in liquid form. Okay, here we go. Ready to close the oven door. One handed. Not going to work. Alright, well you saw the pie going into the oven. Okay, so it bakes for about 40 minutes, then I'm going to check it and possibly up to 50 minutes, but I'm going to watch it to see when it's done so I, I don't burn it. Can you hear it still bubbling? It's done. I'm going to let it cool. Um, the recipe says that the, the gelatin solidifies even more as it cools and to refrigerate it if you need to, but to cool it completely before you cut it. Uh, this is for Thanksgiving, so it's going to have plenty of time to cool.